This video will show you the different fixed prosthodontic instruments that are commonly used. The first instrument is the mouth mirror. The mouth mirror has several purposes. The mouth mirror is used for indirect vision, for areas that the doctor cannot see directly with their own eyes. It can also be used to retract soft tissue, such as the lips, cheek, and tongue. And it can also be used to reflect light in areas of the mouth that are dark or hidden from the operating light. The next instrument is the Explorer. Explorers often have two different ends on them. And the Explorer is used to detect any abnormalities on the teeth such as cavities or other imperfections. For fixed prosthodontics, the Explorer could also be used to remove cement from around a seated crown. Then we have a cotton pliers. This one is a non-locking cotton pliers. Cotton pliers can be used to remove or place small objects in the mouth, such as cotton rolls, cotton pellets, or any other small items that are needed. Then we have a spoon excavator. The spoon excavator has a round spoon shaped end on each side. The spoon excavator is used to remove soft debris such as carious dentin. On this setup it can serve multi-purposes a lot of times the operator may use a spoon excavator to place cement on the inside portion of the crown or bridge abutments, somewhere where the cement spatula might be too large to reach. Next we have a scaler. We have a double-ended scaler, a sickle shape on one end and a jaquette shape on the other. Scalers are sharp and they're used to remove deposits from the teeth. On a prosthodontic setup, scalers are commonly used to remove cement from around a seated crown. But they could also be used to clean calculus off the teeth before the preparation or after preparation when the crown is ready to be seated. Next we have a cord placing instrument. Cord placing instruments are usually a double-ended instrument. This one happens to be a round shape. They may be round or square. This one is serrated. It has little teeth around the outside of it. They may also be smooth. The purpose of this is to place the gingival retraction cord into the sulcus. Some operators do not use this. They use a different instrument such as a spoon excavator or the paddle end of a Woodson instrument. Then we have the actual gingival retraction cord. Gingival retraction cord comes in different sizes. This one is zero, which is quite small, but it can also come in triple zero. The purpose of the gingival retraction cord is to widen the gingival sulcus. By widening the gingival sulcus, it will allow the impression material to flow into the sulcus to capture the anatomy during the impression. Cords can be knitted, braided, or twisted. They may be impregnated with epinephrine or other agents to help stop bleeding. Next we have a cement spatula, and a cement spatula is used to mix dental cements. It's used to mix your temporary cement when you're ready to place your provisional crown or bridge, and it's also used to mix the permanent cement when you're ready to cement the final restoration. And then we have an articulating paper holder along with the articulating paper. This item used together is used to check the bite of the patient to make sure that the restoration meets their occlusion and is not high. 
If it's high, the doctor will adjust the restoration so their bite feels normal. Next we have burrs. These are prep burrs. These are used to prepare the teeth. And these are diamonds. You can see the rough surface texture. Diamond burrs are used to quickly reduce the bulk structure of the teeth. Because they're made out of diamonds, have little diamond chips all over the surface, it will reduce the tooth very quickly. So diamond burrs are used to prepare the teeth. Next we have acrylic burrs. Acrylic burrs are used to trim and polish acrylic temporary restorations. If you're making a traditional crown or bridge for a patient where the final restoration is fabricated in a laboratory, you're going to have the patient leave your office with a temporary restoration. In order to polish that or to shape it, you need to use burrs that are made specifically for working with acrylic material. A next set of burrs that may be used or will be used during the final restoration on the cementation tray are finishing burrs. These happen to be for finishing porcelain. The finishing burrs are made specifically to finish the material that the crown or bridge is made out of. They may be porcelain, ceramic, or used for precious metals like gold. These happen to be extra oral burrs. Notice the large size. Finishing burrs will also come in an intraoral size so that once the restoration has been seeded, the final adjustments can be made inside of the mouth. So before the restoration is cemented permanently, the doctor can adjust the crown or bridge outside of the mouth. Once it's cemented, any final adjustments are made with the intraoral burrs, intraoral finishing burrs. As with any other restorative procedure, you're going to have paper products, such as your cotton rolls. They help to absorb moisture and keep the area dry and isolated, limited isolation. Gauze can be used for the same purpose. It can also be used to wipe off your spatula after you've mixed cement. Your crown and bridge scissors will be used to trim excess material off a temporary restoration. So when you give that patient a provisional while they're waiting for the final restoration to be made, you're going to use your crown and bridge scissors to trim any excess material. The contouring pliers can be used to shape, crimp, or contour the temporary restoration. You will also have floss on your tray setup. Floss is used to check the contact areas of the teeth. If the patient is receiving a bridge, the floss may be used with a floss threader, which is similar to a needle and thread concept. If you've ever had braces, you may have had to use one of these. The floss threader can be pushed under the pontic of a bridge, and the floss can be pulled through and then by sweeping the floss back and forth under the pontic of a bridge, it will clean out any debris. So for fixed prosthodontics, you can use floss to check the contacts or to floss under a bridge. And after cementation, you can use floss to remove interproximal cement pieces. The last thing you will have is a shade guide. 
shade guides are made specifically for the material that's being used for the final restoration. So use the shade guide that matches with your material. Shade guides should always be used in natural light to get the best matching results for your patient. It's always a good idea to involve your patient also. Give them a handheld mirror so that they can help pick out a shade that they believe matches as well.